Hi, this is Mark Patterson, University Ombuds for California State University Channel Island. And I want to take a few minutes to share with you some ideas and tips on how to engage in effective group decision making online. Since in the world of Corona, many of us are working at home and our offices and teams are scattered to various places. And we're forced to do a lot of collaboration in a virtual setting that has always or often been done in person. But there are ways that we can work around the technology and even make it work to our benefit. I wanted to share with you three basic ideas that can help turn challenging online meetings and group decisions into effective ones. The first concept to keep in mind is that it's good to start with the end in mind. As Stephen Covey talked about, it applies in a more limited sense in online decision making. Start with some idea about how implementation will look, even without necessarily knowing what the options may be. Even if you have some idea of options that are inherently incompatible, the more you can find the commonality that will be required in terms of people to be involved, resources that will be, will be required, and stakeholders that will be affected. Where you find the commonalities is where you'll have the best idea of how to frame the decision-making process and what needs to be considered going into it. The second concept that you want to keep in mind is that you want to know what the trade-offs are going to be in, as far as methodology goes for decision-making. In some ways, this applies in the face-to-face -face environment as well. We, as particularly in the Western world, uh, tend to take for granted that voting is the way you make a group decision. And it is effective, uh, a decision-making tool in many circumstances, but it is one that has strengths and weaknesses. So as you think about the kinds of tools you might use to make a decision in a virtual environment, think of the trade-offs between, and I'll share with you a screenshot here of different polls, mainly the trade-offs you may need to make between efficiency and commitment of the parties and flexibility and clarity of the decision-making. So I'll share with you my screen so you can see some of these trade-offs in action and the kinds of example uh, methodologies that might be affected by it. So here you see I have it represented in four, two different axes between efficiency and commitment and um, clarity and flexibility. So as you look up and down these charts, as you gain clarity, you're in many cases going to have to give some level of flexibility up. And as you gain commitment by the parties, there is going to be some necessity of conceding efficiency or prompt decision making. I like to think of the analogy of in the business world, you often hear you can have price, quality, or speed, but not all three at the same time. Choose two. So in this environment, you can have flexibility, commitment, clarity, and efficiency, but not all at the same time. So thinking about how you make a decision with these axes in mind can help you, and, and thinking about the kind of values that are most important can help you choose a tool that is well suited to those values. For example, on the chart, you might decide, well, we need to maintain a lot of flexibility over time. So a more uh, contract type agreement uh, or decision which has a lot of clarity is not really in our best interest, but we want people to have a lot of buy-in. So something like a negotiated statement of principles is a more powerful tool in that environment. Or at the other end of the spectrum, going back to voting, if you want something that's quick and efficient, but has a risk of, or not as necessary to have people have deep buy-in, um, but has great clarity, a vote is a very powerful tool. So think about the spectra that are involved between flexibility and clarity, efficiency and commitment, and then choose a tool that will balance those things accordingly. The last idea to consider is how to make the decision I call sign hearable. I look at the example of say in litigation, an effective litigator, a trial lawyer will use the tool of writing out the judge's motion order for the court in making an argument for a particular ruling. 
Not that it really expects, or she really expects the judge to implement and sign here, but it is psychologically much easier to have commitment to and follow through on an agreement, which doesn't require a lot of hemming and hawing or uh, negotiation or change to get to. So think of ways that when the parties feel they've reached decision, it doesn't involve a lot of uncertainty as to what the decision would look like to implement. Not always feasible in every case to have great detail, as we said in the last discussion there, but it is powerful to think in terms of when you've reached a decision, you know you've reached it, how will people know what it is? So those are the three keys to effective online decision making. Start from implementation, consider the trade-offs that maybe need to be made in arriving at a tool, and finally, make it as sign hearable as possible.